Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're going to take a look at 4.1 electrolytes. So our objective will be to describe the difference between weak and strong electrolytes. All right, so electrolytes, that's what this whole thing is about. What are they? What even are electrolytes? Uh, first off, what do they do? What makes them electrolytes? Well, electrolytes conduct electricity when you add them to water, or if you melt them, they will conduct electricity. That's the electro part of electrolytes, right? That's kind of like electricity. So it'll conduct electricity uh, when you dissolve them. So how does it do that? Well, that's a great question. Well, when you dissolve them, it's going to break up into ions when either you melt it or you dissolve it. So that's how they do it. So if this was my circuit and I had my battery like right over here. Where's my cursor? That's my battery. And this is the negative terminal. We have electrons trying to flow through the circuit and they want to go over this gap which I filled with water and water is not a very good conductor of electricity despite what you may think about water. So what happens is well the electrons are flowing and they get to where this is broken and it wants to go across that gap but it can't. What happens is when you add electrolytes you add charges and these charges are mobile. They're able to move around which means you know, because they can move over there and they can move over this way. It means that charge that the electrons carry is still able to move across the gap. So if you have a negative charge here from the electrolytes, it's able to move through the water and complete that circuit so that the charge and the electrons can keep going. It'll power that light bulb and, you know, return to the other terminal of the battery. So what happens with ionic compounds in water? Well, what happens is we know we have this water molecule and water is polar. So if this is my molecule, I know that oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. So it's pulling electrons towards it. So these are polar bonds, which means that at this end of the, the water molecule, you have a slightly negative charge. And at the hydrogen ends, you have slightly positive charges. Well, when you have an ionic compound with ions that have charges, they're going to interact. The positive charges are going to interact with the negative charges and the negative end of the water molecule is going to interact with the positive charges. So let's see that in action as I erase all this stuff and get it out of your way. All right. So if I put some sodium chloride, some salt in water, what happens is the water molecules will be attracted to the ions and then those water molecules are going to separate those ions from each other. And that's what's happening when things are dissolving. Where did it go? Well, well, the water molecules pulled it apart from it being in a solid, and now they're dissolved. And other water molecules are going to come and surround it, and now those charges are able to move around because they're not stuck in a crystal lattice anymore. They're free to go in any direction that they want, right? Which is why they're able to conduct electricity, because you have mobile charges. Mobile meaning they can move in charges because <laughs> it's charges. All right, so how uh, do molecular compounds behave in water? What happens when we dissolve them? How come um, <clears throat> they're a little different? They're, most of them aren't electrolytes. But what happens is the same thing. You have this crystal solid with this organized structure, and the water is going to interact with it in the same way that it was hanging out with ionic compounds, and it's going to pull it apart just like it did with ionic compounds. The big difference here is that there are no mobile charges. This whole thing right here, is neutral. It's still a charge of zero. So it's not uh, charges. The particles become mobile, but they don't have a charge with them. So it's not going to conduct electricity because we have no mobile charges. So soluble ionic compounds are electrolytes. If it dissolves and it's ionic, it's an electrolyte. But molecular compounds tend not to be electrolytes because they don't have charges. And there are exceptions, of course, because it's never that easy, you know. The exceptions include acids and bases. So if you have a molecular compound that's an acid, well, it's going to be an electrolyte. If you have a molecular compound that's a base, it will be an electrolyte. But generally speaking, molecular compounds tend not to be electrolytes. So now let's talk about this concept of strong versus weak electrolyte. You know, are they actually strong? Are they picking up cars and stuff? No. All right, so what's it mean to be a strong electrolyte? Well, not all compounds dissociate to the same extent. What I mean by that is some completely dissociate and ionize, while some other ones, maybe only some of them dissociate and ionize. If you add a bunch of it to water, maybe only some of them dissolve. So if it completely dissociates, then it's a strong electrolyte. 
And if it only partially dissociates, uh, dis I'm sorry, dissociates, then it's a weak electrolyte. So let me show you what I mean by that. So strong electrolytes are going to completely ionize. So here I have some sodium chloride, which is a strong electrolyte. And let's see what happens when I add it to water. I didn't draw water in there because I got lazy. All right. So I add water to it. And what happens to these, you know, this compound, these crystals, they're going to dissociate completely. So now every single ion has been separated from the structure the crystal structure so it's completely dissociated it's completely ionized that's a strong electrolyte whereas if i had a weak electrolyte like water which is a very very weak electrolyte look at all these molecules i have are they going to break apart into ions well it's a very weak electrolyte so yeah but not very much like if you take a look at all these molecules and then let's see it partially ionized like, oh, wow, it was just this molecule that ionized. So it's not a very strong electrolyte. It doesn't completely uh, ionize. It doesn't uh, dissociate completely, right? It's just going to break up. Maybe one of these breaks up into an H plus and an OH minus. So it's not very strong as far as electrolytes are concerned. So to summarize, what is an electrolyte? Why do they conduct electricity? And what is the difference between a weak and a strong electrolyte? You should be able to answer all this. And if you can't, you can go back and rewatch the video. All right. So... Uh, I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Bring questions. Okay.